correctly. You use that that possession correctly. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like a, an automobile. Whenever I got first got I, my first twenty five cars, I wasn't sanctified. <laughs> Well, a good example, whenever I was a teenager, I had this 63 Chevrolet truck, and it was a hot rod. It had big M50 tires all the way around. It had a four-speed uh, Saginaw rock crusher transmission, big old belt motor. I mean, no telling how much money I put in this truck. Every weekend, that truck was out there racing, and it would be hauled back in with a tow truck or on a rollback, and it was time to spend some money to work on it all the way long. And then back out on the road again the next weekend to tear something else all to pieces. And my, you know, one day I backed out the driveway and we had company at the house and there's a bunch of people sitting across the front with my dad and mom. And I just lit them big set of M50s up back when you could buy M50s. I mean, just burned them all the way up the road, smoke, gas, tires, you know, the whole works. And the man turned around and said, you let your son do that? He said, well, he's got a job. He's never been locked up. He's never went to jail you know, I've never had to pay a fine for him or anything like that. He works all the time. That's his truck, his money. You know, I guess he can do what he wants to with it. You know, my dad, he didn't care. He said, you'll learn. You'll learn one day. And, and it just seems like that sometimes when God gives us something good, we don't take care of it like we are too. And it wasn't until I got older I realized, you know, dumping the clutch on this thing and breaking all the bell housing bolts out of the back of the motor... It's not a good idea. <laughs> Torquing this thing up and redlining it and dumping it and having the clutch come through the bell housing up into the floorboard with you, <laughs> spending about seven grand is not a good idea, especially for your feet. Like a saw blade coming up through there. What I figured out is if I would drive those cars right in, baby those cars, I'd get a lot more use out of them. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's, that's like stewardship in our life. Listen, if you live your life in a rough way and you, you abuse this body, there's coming payday. I, I saw a great example of that this week with a man that I was with in the hospital. He done, he done drugs. He smoked like a freight train. He drank like a fish. He done this for years. He's ten. He's, he's five days younger than me, like in ten years. Birthday is August twenty eighth, fifty two. Yes, that's why I said he's. Did I say younger? Sorry, he's older. And I hear this all the time. I heard a man the other day. He's the same age. He's sixty two. He said, "Yeah, you're going to fall apart." I said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to fall apart like you have. <coughs> because I've done some things to preserve me that you haven't done. Right. But what's weird is this guy went to the doctor to get a checkup and he felt pretty good. But the doctor told him, you've only got 20% of your liver left and you've got cirrhosis of the liver. And all of a sudden he comes home, hepatitis C, cirrhosis of the liver, with a death sentence. It says, man, if you don't make a lifestyle change, you're going to die. Listen, unless God heals him, it's too late anyway. But he went cold turkey on everything after he found that news out. And he and I was talking. He said, yeah, I should have done this 20 years ago. I'm like, yeah, you should have. Yeah, you should have quit 20 years ago because, listen, God gives you this precious life for a reason. To glorify Him. And when you don't take care of something, listen, we're talking about, not a, we're not talking about sanctifying the mind right now, we're talking about sanctifying the body. Taking care of that possession, that vessel that God gives you by not abusing it. Well, we're all guilty. I mean, I might have quit tobacco in October of 91. The last beer I ever drank was uh, back in them days. last cigar I ever smoked was back in them days. But I sure have put away a lot of McDonald's French fries and Wendy's hamburgers. 
sit sin and coffee and several barrels of Coke over the years. Coca-Cola, not snorting Coke, but Coca-Cola. I've never done that no stronger than Benadryl. But when God gives you something and and listen, I, I'm a firm believer that your body talks to you all the time. I'm a firm believer in that. I, I, I've been I've been to one doctor in 31 years with a kidney stone. But what I've learned is when my body tells me something, it's time to change something. It's time to find what's going to not work and don't do it no more and find what works and go that way. Because God, God give you life. He designed you to live. And to glorify Him. So you sanctify your vessel, this, this body. That's how come that, that's how come we are to be under conviction when we're doing something that's contrary to this body. Amen? Amen. We are to be under conviction somewhere or another about, about that. That if we're doing something that's harmless, listen, payday's coming one day. And, and a lot of people don't like to read the Word of God. They pick and they choose different things in here that they like and they dislike and they decide to follow the things that are good. But the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. Yes. It's the only one you're going to have on this side. I haven't seen no body transplants. And you're going to rip your mind out of that and go put it in another body somewhere. It's the only one you're going to have on this side. You better take care of it. I'm preaching to Bruce right now. Boy, it's hot. I feel the fires of hell on my feet. That may just be the diabetes flaring up. I don't know. No, I ain't got no diabetes. But we pick and we choose the things we like and we dislike and we decide, you know, hey, I'll, 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 I'll do that. I ain't got no problem saying thou shalt not covet. Ain't nobody got nothing I don't want. Ain't got no problem with that. Ain't got no problem with bunch of them commandments over there. But what about the practical things? The practical commitments that Scripture talks about. About glorifying God not only with your mind, with your words, but with your body. It's part of sanctification. See, the old holiness church, they had the idea that, 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 that it was the clothes you were wearing. Somehow or another, that was sanctified. And God forbid that a woman have short hair. Because if she bobbed her hair off, which I never understood that anyway. They pinned it up. One of the ways you could tell if you had a good Pentecostal meeting was how many hair pins was in the floor. <laughs> they pinned it all up anyway, so they were making it short. I never figured that one out. And then it was a sin for a man to have long hair. It was a sin in certain places to, to wear jewelry or makeup. And then they decided, some of them decided that they'd change it. And they said, it's okay, you can wear jewelry as long as it don't cost over $20. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that, that was man making up his own religious rules. And let's face it, folks. You can sniff out bad religion. Now I'm going to tell you, you know, many times say Christianity is not religion, but really, truly it, it is. In the, in the truest definition, it, it really is religion. The problem is there's good religion and there's bad religion. Bad religion is where man gets involved in that mess and starts making up his own set of rules to abide by. That's where the problem gets into. You know, it's uh, Jesus Christ... Organize the church. I mean, let's face it, if Uncle Clyde and I get in a car to go somewhere together, we have just organized something. Amen? Now, Uncle Clyde and I can be free and say, I don't care if this is a Chevrolet or a Ford, it's going to get us there. But if I begin to nitpick, and I say, well, I can't ride in this because it's got a beige interior and I can only ride in the green interior. Well, that's what God wants. <laughs> Suddenly, my good intention has become bad religion. Amen? Amen? 
And it doesn't it seem like the more rules and regulations that we add, the worse it gets and you can't live by it? Yeah. Amen. So that's how come there's freedom in Christ. Paul said that, that, that he was at liberty to do all things. But not all things were convenient for him. Not all things were good for him. Now listen, I love a good bologna and egg sandwich as good as I do anything. To me, that's as good as any porterhouse steak that's ever been grilled. I mean, my goodness, the king liked bologna sandwiches. They always like bologna sandwiches. <laughs> but you see what happened to the king eating his bologna sandwiches and doing his drugs. Yeah, there you go. The bologna sandwich didn't help with the heart failure, I can tell you that. But if that's all I ever done in my body was eat them things, it's going to catch up with me after a while. Mm -hmm. I'm at liberty to do it. But sooner or later, it's going to hurt me if I keep on. Listen, as much as I loved Copenhagen, when I was dipping a can, sometimes a can and a half a day, that can't be good for you after a while. I mean, that can't be good. It's just like... I, I can feel it whenever I drink too much coffee. I can tell it's time to quit. When you hit that wall, it's time to stop. <laughs> Go get some sleep. Something to calm, calm down. And Chick-fil-A throws three co free coffee on and I've got an attic at the house that just <laughs> makes laps through the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not free anymore. So... We understand that it's important to sanctify the body. Listen to the Word. Because sanctify them through thy Word. In other words, when you and I abide and obey. It's one thing to read it and know it. But it's another thing to stand behind it and say, that's for me. We want the promises of God. We want the promises of the Bible. We want the blessings of the Bible. But we sure don't want none of the curses. But the Bible says, as a man sows, so shall he reap. The law of sowing and reaping. We always equate that with money, but I'm going to tell you, whatever you're planting is going to come up, and it's going to come up yeah. multiplied. If you sow to the wind, you're going to reap a whirlwind. If you sow a bunch of bad relationships into your life, <laughs> woe be unto you. You're going to have relationship illness like you wouldn't believe. When you allow people, certain people, into your life, when you open the door up to certain people and you allow them to, to come into your life, it's like, it's like throwing the, the door open on your house and inviting a, a, a criminal gang in to live with you. That's what you do whenever you open up your life to allow certain people in there that don't profit you anything. Here's, a, here's your good rule to go by. Do they add value to my life? They ain't talking about helping somebody. Because there's plenty of people out there that need help that you can help. But after a while, they're either improving or you're just enabling them and they're not adding value to your life. Right. It's part of sanctification. Sanctification covers a lot of ground. Sanctifying your friendships, who who you allow into your space, who you allow into your arena around you. There's certain people I love them, but I can't let them in my space. I can only get so close with them, and then I have to stop because I realize they're going to poison me. They're going to poison my faith. They're going to drag me down into their sorrow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. So part of sanctification not only has to do with the body, but it has to do with those you come in contact with. Amen. You know, it's like I heard one preacher say the other day, he said, you know, if you play around the creek long enough, you're going to wind up in it. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. My grandma would say, and she knew. She said, y'all go down there, but you stay out of that creek. And man, that's the first thing I've had before was get in the water. I come home muddy, soaking wet. 
down there trying to catch minnows and crawfish and everything else back whenever the things were still in the creek down there in Ackworth. You lay around with dogs, you come in with fleas. You run around with the wrong people, you going to be the wrong people. Yeah. You might say, well, well, I got this. I won't be like them. I'm here to rescue them. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't even rescue yourself. How many, how many folks y'all know of in the prayer meeting that's trying to rescue somebody and they need rescuing themselves? <laughs> Whole pile of them. <clears throat> Thought they was doing something holy because they was going to go hang out with them over there and help them. Shoot. They needed help. They wasn't gaining anything by going over there and trying to mess around with them. If anything, they're both falling in the ditch, blind leading the blind. That's exactly what that root that that wound up. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. You get them kind of people out of your life, and life will get better. Amen. I'm just gonna tell you how it is. That's just how it is. I mean, let's face it. It is the same way with spending your money. You go out and you waste your money on dumb stuff. You're gonna be broke. You're going to be broke. And there's always somebody going to help you be broke. <laughs> always somebody in your family going to help you be broke. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, but never contribute nothing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know whole houses full of people like that. Where one person opened their heart up and said, come on in. Next thing you know, they had eight people living there. Nobody paying nothing. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know, you, you you try to help your you try to help your family. Or non family. And and, and non family. Non family. And, and non family and you see I am not talking about not being charitable. We all need to be givers. But I'm not talking about somebody taking advantage of listen, that's stewardship of what God's given you. That's that's part of sanctification. Is that you take that which is of value and you glorify God with it, but then you don't go to the point where it's wasted away. It's like I went down today to get some gas for a, a, a chainsaw I was working on. And there was a guy sitting beside me and he had this big old handful of lottery tickets. And he just sitting there scratching nothing, scratching nothing, scratching nothing. I thought to myself, man, I hate being that guy's shoes. I think so, yes. And then I got to thinking about it. Well, what if I went and bought one and won 40 bucks? What would I do? <laughs> would I want to go buy another one? Yeah, I'm sure we would, wouldn't we? Because we'd think, wow, boy, I won 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. I won 40 bucks. Yeah, you know how that goes. You, you're watching that game show at home and you're getting all the questions right. And you're like, if I went on that show, I'd be the best. Because I'm sitting here on the couch and I'm, I'm guessing all the answers on Family Feud. <laughs> but when it comes to you, I can tell you it's not going to be that way. You're not going to armchair quarterback it whenever it becomes for you. <laughs> so you see, Jesus talks about and I know we got to hurry because it's going to freeze and it's going to be black ice and death and everything else. But, but we, we think about all that stuff, but it's all part of our sanctified life before God. That we live our lives. Jesus says, I pray that, they don't, that, that they're not taken out of the world even though they're not a part of the world. In other words, He's saying that we can live our life through Him. And then there's the mind aspect. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ, that you be, you are you are literally one with God. Your mind. You know, there's a scripture over there that says, "Casting down evil imagination and anything that exalteth itself against God." Now, the devil has a real way of coming along and making you guilty over your thoughts. I've heard people say, the way you thought it, you might as well have said it. That's not true. Because I'm going to tell you, them evil thoughts come from different sources, and different places. And sometimes, you know, one of the greatest old Baptist preachers 
that's remembered as the Prince of Preachers back in the 